Episode 1 Lightning strikes twice To all our listeners this is less of a podcast more of a bedtime story narrated for my cat from 7 seas away among all the ways available this seems like my best way to reach him you're more than welcome to listen in and let us know what you think if you think it's a nice story do share it with your loved ones fair warning just like life this too is a long story with its own shares of ups and downs and whose end I do not know yet but one that I very much intend to finish in person all I can say is hope and love are very powerful tools and can move mountains and I'll need all I can find to make it back so here we go dear kaito hope you're all well fed with your pasta tin this is your dada i didn't want you to get worried so i am here to read you a bedtime story about your mom as we try to make our way back I want to tell you that though you can't see me we still love you and we'll be home and that's a promise This story began like most stories a little before dinner time I had been making pasta too regular one tuna with extra basil just the way you like it for you and your mom were at the wet and I know your angry two fours cannot resist the aroma of tuna and basil all of a sudden I heard a loud bang and a thud which was quickly followed by a cloud of dust. The next thing I remember were vague flashes of a big wolf-like creature, a venomous henchman, and the fire breathers mumbling as the ceiling spun vigorously. All I felt was a muscular hand lifting me by the collar and whispering to me, "We shall take what is rightfully ours." I then felt the grass loosen as I slipped back into a state of hazy darkness, interspersed with the sounds of sirens, honking, and frantic yelling. The one thing I do remember though vividly is lying on what I believe was a hospital bed, staring at the door, seeing a silhouette of you and your mom through the window. At that moment I realized this story can't be over, not like this, at least not yet. A few days had passed. We headed home. I was happy to see you hopping with your tail doing the weird exclamation thing like an ecstatic anime character. That was the first time your head bird threw me a little off balance. Your mom and I had a long conversation on our way to the study. No one had seen the wolf, the fire breathers or the serpent ever since. As you and I headed to the study, your mom excused herself to tidy up the bedroom. Surprisingly, the study was exactly as we left it. except now it had a thin layer of dust with a paw print on it no screamed your mom from the other room we both ran in as if we had left the toilet seat up again we found her sobbing in front of the closet that was in complete disarray with the safe cracked open they took it they took his bow tie she said with a trembling voice barely managing to keep herself together you may wonder why this much fuss over a bow tie We promised we'd never bring it up again, but it all came pouring back to me like the rain at the night we first met you. It was just your mom and I in a tiny house, barely large enough for the two of us. The bell rang, and there you were, the size of an ankle sock, luscious grey, with big blue eyes in a woven basket, wearing this bright orange bow tie with blue pinstripes. There was also a note that read please take care of him and love him with all your heart and a paw print with a tiny scar on it For one second as we lifted you and you looked at us with those wonderful eyes we had forgotten all our struggles battles and pain your mom and I had faced up to that point and within that moment somehow instantly we became a family little did we know what was coming our way Within minutes the three of us were surrounded by a sea of dark figures with red eyes for as far as i could see what are they your mom whispered one of them walked slowly towards us unflinchingly staring at you though we had been a family for a little over a minute now we couldn't let them have you that night we fought and fought with every ounce of fight that we had within us Your mom took down at least a couple of dozen bloodhounds 
but they were relentless. They just kept coming till they amassed the entire grey sky. It was as if they had been controlled by one mind and had become desensitized to any form of pain. And just then, when all hope seemed lost, underneath all the darkness, you saw a blinding golden glow come from your bow tie, followed by a gigantic dome of lightning that pushed them at least a hundred feet away. I remember the raindrop stood frozen for a fraction of a second, just like us, trying to understand what just happened. And you know what comes after lightning, right kiddo? A thunderous roar. It had them run away as if they had just regained consciousness and knew what was to come. The three of us finally made it past the night. Your mom and I vowed never to let any harm come to you ever again. Slowly, we built this castle in the Alps, far, far away. So something like that night never ever happened again. I knew this was the same story your mom was thinking about. And that, my boy, marked the beginning of our journey. We've met so many great animals and some not so great ones. And they all had stories to tell. And I wanted to bring them to you. Your aunt is going to take great care of you till you are back. Till then, I'll be bringing you the story as it goes on. And I promise you, I'll be home to finish the story. Sweet dreams.